Hello and welcome to today's video. So today I'm going to be talking to you about a concept called antioxidant loading. This is a really fun one. This is something that can provide you a lot of results. One reason I really like it is it's quite universally helpful. So whether it's a gut problem, whether it's an autoimmune disease, whether it's like a mental health thing, whatever it is that's happening in your body, antioxidant loading can be very, very helpful because your antioxidant system influences every single function that happens in your whole entire body. So regardless of what's happening, if you have essentially a, a deficit of antioxidants, providing them can have a positive knock-on impact anywhere, anywhere where it's needed in the body. But this is particularly helpful for a a, 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 like a portion, like a, some some certain things. So universally applicable, but it's extra helpful if you have a history or if you have chronic fatigue syndrome or some kind of energy uh, deficit syndrome, um, chronic immune system problems. So like viral infections, uh, Lyme, EBV, like the body being put in a, in a situation where it has organisms that are living in it that it wants to remove, but it can't. It just cannot, it doesn't have the resources to get on top. Having antioxidants helps to do this. So it can be really helpful for that. And if you have chronic pain, any kind of chronic pain um, and chronic inflammation, if you've got chronic pain and chronic inflammation, having more antioxidants is not only gonna help with giving you less pain, like it's gonna actually effectively function as a painkiller, but it's actually gonna help more at the, that root cause level. It's gonna sort the inflammation out so that there's nothing that is actually causing you pain. So it's particularly helpful in these things. But you do have to be careful. And this is why I would really encourage you to watch through to the end because I'm going to give you some, when we talk about these more, the more powerful ones at the end, so we're going to be looking at like high dose vitamin C, glutathione, even IV therapies. This is really powerful stuff and you can actually make yourself really bad. You can set yourself back. I actually had a personal setback doing this and that's why I'm sharing this with you today. But I'm going to walk you through how to do this in a, in a, in a, in a very um, gentle way, in a very methodical way, so you can avoid these, these negative uh, potential side effects. So there's a, there's a hierarchy to this. There's a, a progression. There are levels to this that you work through. And we're going to start at the bottom and build up. So generally, when we're doing antioxidant loading, I would encourage you to start with the things that I'm talking about first and work through these in this order. This, this order brings in all different variables. So it brings in cost. It brings in the amount of effort that it takes to the amount of reward that you get. It brings into consideration tolerability. So the likelihood that this is going to succeed for you, that this is going to provide benefits instead of drawbacks. I've considered all of these factors in providing this hierarchy list. So we start with earthing, earthing and grounding. Why is that? So first of all, it's a one-time purchase. So you can you can go and like do earthing and grounding. You can go and stand outside. You stand in the beach. You can do these things. What I'm really talking about here is using some kind of grounding or earthing equipment from your from your house, particularly while you sleep. So you basically it's very simple. Plug it into the wall. Plug it into you either like wrist strap or ankle strap, thigh band. You can get pillowcases, bed sheets, sleeping bags. Doesn't it doesn't matter. Whatever works for you. And being connected to the earth is going to put you in a place where you are receiving antioxidants from the earth while you are asleep. There are other benefits as well, like balancing your circadian rhythm, cooling inflammation in other in other ways, helping you with with sleep and, and balancing just your overall like your circadian rhythm. So really helping with everything that is involved in the circadian rhythm, which is everything. So, but I don't want to go in too much into detail there. If you want to learn more about the, that specific topic, I have plenty of videos on YouTube. I have one full guide talking all about grounding and earthing and the benefits, how to do it, how to determine which of these products that you want to work with. You can go and check that out. Just go on YouTube, search my name, William Dickinson, followed by the, the topic. So grounding, earthing, tutorial. The antioxidant benefits here. It's a one-time purchase. Like You buy it once and you have it forever. All of these other things we're going to be looking at, like supplements and juicing, it's like you have to keep buying them to keep getting the effects. With grounding, you buy it once and you have it forever. So it's just such a no-brainer to me. It's definitely the first place to start. And the, the benefits are just huge. 
one like every, everybody should use it it's it's such a universally helpful thing so this is where i would start next step i would move to juicing now the reason that i like juicing here and again i have a vi I I have several videos talking specifically about juicing and all the different benefits. So again, if you want more detail on juicing specifically, again, YouTube, my name, William Dickinson, followed by the topic juicing, you will, you will find a video. Now, you'll find several videos. But the reason it's really helpful here, and the reason it comes so high on this list, like so close to the start, tolerability is going to be significantly higher because juice is a, is a, is a complex of different antioxidants, polyphenols, different substances, minerals, vitamins that are going to improve tolerability. When you take one thing, like when you take one super powered antioxidant, like when you take glutathione or when you take vitamin C or when you take something like this, it provides lots of antioxidants, but it throws a load of different processes in your body out of balance. And that's going to make you feel bad. So juice is a really nice place to start because one, it's from a whole food. And because nature is intelligent, it has the complex of different things to, to keep those antioxidants in an appropriate level of balance so they don't throw you off so much and you can work on your dosage here so this is another reason i like it you can start really small and you can build up over time you can start on half a teaspoon to a teaspoon to a tablespoon to a third of a cup to half a cup anywhere up to say a liter or so a day i've i have done a liter of juicing every day for very long periods of time very powerful source of of antioxidants not only do you get things like vitamin c in it but you also get plant bioflavonoids. The reason that these are so powerful here is different toxins have affinities for different detox pathways and different antioxidants are more effective at quenching different types of toxins. So when you're juicing, you're getting a diverse array of different powerful antioxidants. So it's, it's really nice and the tolerability is high, dosage is very modifiable. It overall, it just is amazing. And there's so many other benefits. So again, it comes very high on this list. Next, I'd move to vitamin C. So high dose, like mononutrient of, of antioxidant. So some caveats just before we start with vitamin C. A lot of vitamin C supplements are made by using molds that feed on like corn or other things to produce vitamin C. So if you've tried vitamin C in the past and you're thinking, I already know this isn't for me, maybe not. You just have to be mindful of where the vitamin C is coming from. Also, if you have things like gastritis or you have gut problems, vitamin C is basically like it's pure acid. Like it's, it can be very irritating to your gut if it's a little bit sensitive. So my suggestion here would actually be, and again, we're, we're kind of trying to temper this and use it more from this juicing perspective. You know, we're trying to get more of it holistic. We'd look for a plant, like a whole food plant-based form of vitamin C. So a really nice one here is acerola cherry. It's a hard one to say. You try and say it, try and say it fast three times. You, you won't be able to say it. Acerola cherry it's a really hard one so the reason this is nice is it's a natural form of vitamin c it's not produced by molds eating corn and then producing vitamin c that's then harvested and put into an ascorbate or into a liposomal version it's actually just vitamin c that's concentrated from the from these cherries so it's like a natural form of vitamin c which means you get some of the other things in there too bonus points if you get a vitamin c supplement that also has flavonoids in it particularly things like citrus bioflavonoids so Again, this is taking a leaf out of the juicing book. We're trying to get more of these sort of like, these are like side nutrients that, that massively enhance the effect of antioxidants. Don't quote me on it, but taking one gram of vitamin C alone versus taking one gram of vitamin C plus bioflavonoids, taking it with bioflavonoids makes that one gram of vitamin C effectively like work like 1.5 grams of vitamin C in your body. Yeah, it enhances the antioxidant capacity of it. It makes it more powerful and effective. So combining it with bioflavonoids is really, really nice. And the citrus ones are quite common because you do get quite a lot of vitamin C in, in them. And you can look for other things as well. Like you can get like rose hips extract. You basically just want to look for vitamin C plus. So like whole food vitamin C. So like from acero acerola cherry, hard one to say. Combined with some bioflavonoids. So like rose hips or... Uh, citrus bioflavonoids or something like that. There's others. It doesn't doesn't really matter. Just bio, with bio, bioflavonoids is definitely better. And you don't have to use a, uh, like a really high dose. What's better is provide your body a consistent daily source and do it for a longer period of time. This way you're very slowly like working on this debt of oxidative damage that your body has accumulated. 
and over time your body's clearing this and we're not doing like a big jump where it throws everything out of balance you have like this crazy detox you feel really bad and i've got a story for you towards the end where i'm going to be telling you about my crazy detox and how i did exactly what you're not supposed to do so that i could learn to teach you how to do it without having to suffer the same way that i did so that crazy story is coming soon so this would be this would be my 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 suggestion with the with the vitamin c if you're already doing something and it's working for you then just fantastic like leave it alone it's fine it works but i've tried vitamin c in the past and i had lots of problems and working through this you know avoiding the the mold based vitamin c using a plant-based form adding the bioflavonoids it's all working very nicely so these are really good options next we're going to move to glutathione so glutathione is a really powerful supplement it's the master antioxidant of the human body there's two ways you can go about this so the first would be you can provide the ingredients so this would be like nac like a cysteine supplement so n-acetylcysteine glutamine and glycine glutamine and glycine you get plenty of in broth so if you tolerate broth cool you can add the cysteine in there's a lot in whey protein powders so you can use that or you can actually take a cysteine supplement which is quite effective personally i don't tolerate cysteine it gives me a really bad headache and i don't really know why there's probably a reason but i haven't figured it out yet it could be to do with cbs genetic mutation could be a million different things right i don't i don't know everything so that doesn't work for me but it's a good option you can do the ingredients nac alone works as a very powerful antioxidant so you can use it similar to like the vitamin c it's just like this mononutrient that's functioning as an antioxidant but i think using glutathione can be very very powerful it's going to replenish the stores in your body almost without exception if you look at people that have chronic fatigue syndrome you, if you check their glutathione levels they're they're tanked like they're below a certain level when your glutathione is low you cannot have energy you cannot have immunity it's just not possible it means you're in a you're in a state of debt like your body has more oxidative damage than it can repair and it's got more viral load than it can kill and get on top of you, you just you just can't beat it one of the best ways to spare glutathione is actually providing other antioxidants. So the earthing, the juicing, the vitamin C, these will all have glutathione sparing properties. But if you're doing all of these things and you're like, okay, I'm doing all of this. I'm still tired. I still have a viral load. Then we bring out the big guns and we use, we use glutathione. We go there. It also works really nicely for scavenging different types of toxins as well. So mycotoxins, metals. It's one of the best ways to bind these things like like biochemically is a really good way of, of doing it. This is the body's natural mechanism of, of removing these things. So we can we can use that. If you're gonna do it, I would start very slowly and build your dose up according to tolerance. So I'm gonna talk about IVs next and then I'll tell them my story. So IVs they're the they're the that's the final final option. This is the nuclear bomb. You know, this is the biggest thing you could possibly use. Because when you're doing an IV, you're going to get the glutathione, you're going to get the vitamin C, and you're going to stick them in in very high doses and see what happens. So I did this. Surprise, surprise. I, I did this. I did a, a vitamin IV. And it had 12 grams of vitamin C. So for reference, before that, I was doing basically just around two grams a day. Two grams one day, one gram the, the other day. And this was with a a form that was actually irritating my stomach a little bit so i then stopped using it but this gives you an idea of where my antioxidant capacity was so i was doing one to two grams of vitamin c a day and no glutathione and this had 12 grams of vitamin c in it and two grams i think it was two grams two grams of glutathione and this caused a horrendous reaction for me it triggered a bunch of different viruses that I still have in my body. I got really sore throat and I'm, I'm still having this to this day. I'm still working through this now. So I'm having a sore throat. My gut struggled the most. You know, my gut is one of my weaker, like most sensitive uh, areas. I've had a history of like really, really bad gut problems. So it's still a bit of my weak link. It's like my, it's like the chink in my armor. You know, it's the, the place where when something goes wrong, it's usually the gut. My gut's been really struggling. It's really affected the motility. It's really affected the tolerance of foods that I'm, that I'm able to eat and able to digest. I have abdominal pain. And when my gut goes bad, it affects other things. It affects energy, affects immunity, affects mood. All of these things have been struggling. And this is because I pushed too far out of my Goldilocks zone. So if you don't know what that means, if I've just said the word Goldilocks zone, you have no idea. 
you have to go and check this video out on YouTube. So again, William Dickinson, the Goldilocks Zone. This is how you optimize your modalities so that they're actually healing you instead of hurting you. Me doing this, doing this high dose IV, I pushed myself out of my optimal window of healing and I went too far to the side. This actually is not healing. Doing this does not help. So I actually hurt myself with doing this. But this is kind of how it works sometimes. The only way you learn is by going too far and, and then you make the mistake. And okay, I'll, I'll, I'll know for next time. It's actually how I figured out how to make this video. So you, I would not suggest you use IVs unless you're doing all of these other things at quite high doses first and your body's ready to, to handle all of these antioxidants. It's, it's been warmed up. It's ready to do this nu nuclear bomb, you know? So you would, you would build up. You would want to be doing, say, like juicing every single day, a litre. You would want to be doing two grams of vitamin C or one gram with every single meal. So maybe you're getting to three, maybe even four grams. You want to be doing 1,000, 2,000 2, milligrams of, of glutathione throughout the day. Then your body's probably ready to handle, handle that. But I would, I would, so as I said, I would build these things up gradually over time. Start the other thing, build it up, stop. And then once that's okay, do the juicing, build that up. And then go for the vitamin C, build that up. And then try the glutathione, build that up. Probably, you don't need to go further. You, you probably don't. If you do, the IVs are there. But you probably don't need it. So even with these things, so you start on the juicing, tiny, tiny dose, teaspoon, tablespoon, third of a cup, half a cup, full cup, two cups, build it up, vitamin C, third of a capsule, half a capsule, full capsule, full capsule twice a day, full capsule three times a day, glutathione, like 50 milligrams, like a tiny, tiny dose. So the dose that I've got a, a, an oral supplement now that I'm playing with, I tried taking 250 milligrams, which was only one eighth as strong as the IV that I had, but still way too strong for me right now, way too far this end of my Goldilocks zone. Triggered my gut, upset everything, triggered all this immune stuff, threw me completely out of balance. So what I'm gonna be doing now is taking these capsules, splitting them up. You can, you can go on Amazon and you can basically buy the capsules that all of your supplements usually come in and you can make your own. So I'm gonna take this dose and split it into five. So I'm gonna do 50 milligrams every second day on top of the vitamin C and build that up. And then when I'm doing 50 milligrams in a day and it's fine, I'm gonna do 50 milligrams, again, keeping the dose the same, but just add another one. So 50 milligrams two times a day. And then I'll try 100 milligrams in the morning and none at night. So I'm changing it to a more powerful dose so it's gonna spike the levels and then it will come down. Then 50 milligram, then 100 in the morning and 50 at night. And then 100 and then 100 and build this up very, very gradually over time. And generally speaking, Whenever you do this, whenever you do antioxidant loading, whenever you push yourself past your limit of, of the Goldilocks zone, whenever you go too far, the things that are going to like kick up, the symptoms that you're going to get, these are the things that are actually going to get fixed long term if you get this right. So if you take too much, you push too far and you get a cold or you get flu-like symptoms like me getting a sore throat or it upsets your asthma or it triggers all of your joint pain and arthritis triggers back on. There's a really good likelihood that if you do this right and you stay in your zone, your Goldilocks zone, and you work that up gradually over time, staying in that zone so you're not triggering really horrible reactions, that's actually going to solve that problem. Whatever symptom it is that's exacerbating, loading correctly will probably solve that problem. So it's a really good indicator. That's usually how Herxheimer reactions work. Same with probiotics. If you take too many probiotics, you push yourself out of your Goldilocks zone, whatever symptoms it triggers, are likely the symptoms that it's going to fix if you can get that dose right and gradually work it up over time. So that is the end of today's video. That is antioxidant loading. I hope you found it really helpful and informative. Let me know if you've tried any of the things that I've talked about before. Let me know if you've tried vitamin C. Let me know if you've tried glutathione. Let me know if you've tried an IV like I did and if it absolutely knocked you sideways the same way that it did for me. Or maybe it really worked for you. Either way, do let me know. I would be really interested to to hear from you i'm just going to check some questions now so caroline says can you please list the ingredients for the juice so with juicing it, you can be very flexible so i had a i had another client the other day a new client we were talking about juice a base recipe that i like to give my clients because it tastes good and it is very effective is celery or cucumber according to what you like or what you're able to get some type of greens that aren't spinach so this could be like kale chard 
Anything that's green, lettuce, cabbages, even broccoli, tastes strong, but it works. Some lemon and some ginger. But you don't have to do this perfectly, you know? 80% of the things that are in juice are the same in, in all different vegetables. So if you can only juice one vegetable, like for me, all I could juice was kale when I was really, really ill. That works. If all you can, ju all you can eat is courgettes and zucchini, just, just juice that, that's fine. You don't have to be perfect with it. But generally a nice one to start with that gives you a very broad array of benefits and actually tastes quite pleasant as well is celery and cucumber as the base, some type of green, lemon and ginger. And if you want to sweeten it a little bit, some sour apple can be good or any kind of fruit that, that works for you. Apart from like mango is a bit harder to juice, bananas absolutely do not juice, avocados, they do not work, blueberries and berries, they're kind of harder to juice, they're better than smoothies. So I hope that helps and answers your, your question there. More questions. Kaylin says, time for the glutathione for me. I have been wanting to add it on, but was worried about overdoing it. Very interesting. So you've worked through this progression. You've got the grounding, you've got the juicing, you've got the, the vitamin C or some other kind of lower, lower tier antioxidant, like NAC or something like that. And now you're ready to go up to the glutathione. Just start slowly because it's very, very powerful. It really, uh, it really, really affected me. Kaylin says she also does the vitamin C pulsing. So this is where you, you, you vary your dose. So you have higher dose and then you have lower dose and you have higher dose and you have a lower dose. This can be helpful because it stops you from developing a dependency. It stops you from becoming, it, stop, it doesn't mess up your own natural antioxidant systems. But if you are in a place where your antioxidant systems, they just aren't working, like you're just flat, you're just flat, like chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia kind of thing, taking them long term, is probably fine. You know, it's probably better to take them long term than to do the pulsing if you if you need that. Cool. Thanks, Kaylin. Lovely to lovely to have you here. It's really nice. I've seen you comment on some, some things, and I've never caught your live, so it's really nice to have you live. So I'm going to wrap this up. Um, hope you found this really helpful, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, and do leave me your comments even even afterwards. I will get back to every single one. See you. Bye bye.